Welcome back everybody. As you probably guessed from the title and the intro, this is what we are going over today. This is an Arsenal SAM 594. This is a limited edition rifle. Only 300 will supposedly ever be made. And as of when I'm recording this video, they're actually available. Knock on wood. Now, so if you guys are looking to pick one up, I wouldn't hesitate because like I said, only 300 will ever be made. But what the heck is it? Well, it is a uh, SAM-5, which means a couple things. So the SAM designation with Arsenal made AKs means that they do have a milled receiver. So it's milled from a solid piece of cold hammer forged steel, all one piece. So there's no uh, having to worry about trunnions or rivets or anything like that. It's a little bit heavier in general. People think they're a little bit stronger and a little bit more accurate. We will check on that here a little bit later on. Then it has a few other accessories to include this top mounting optics rail. And uh, again, we will get into all of those details right after we head out to the range, put a few groups through it and see what kind of accuracy we can get out of it. Um, and then we'll walk through it piece by piece. Before we actually test the accuracy, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, and that sponsor is going to be the Sonoran Desert Institute, or SDI. You can reach them at sdi.edu. For folks that don't know, they are an online, fully accredited institution where you can learn lots of different skills related to the firearms industry to include gunsmithing, how to make holsters, how to start a gun shop, how to, the industry works as a whole all of those sorts of things that folks who are looking to get into the industry might want to know. So if you're interested, definitely check out SDI. Now let's test the accuracy of this rifle. Now we're gonna see what kind of accuracy we can get out of the rifle. In there right now, we have some Remington 223 45 grain, open tip stuff, so very light for caliber. And then we have a couple other loads we'll run through it. We have the CTK Precision Rest and a very high tech uh, sock with some dirt in it. Target is downrange at 100 yards. And uh, on the rifle right now, we have a primary arms one to six scope. Uh, I release a little weird, but it'll work for an accuracy test. Uh, not worried about that at all. If I was actually trying to use it, like for all around use, I'd put a cantilever mount on there, but we go with what we got. The weed out here right now is uh, growing pretty tall. So I, you guys will see when I go down there, I have the target actually on a table. And uh, hopefully, because I'm up here on a ridge line, hopefully none of the rounds are hitting the actual wheat on the way there. That's the goal anyway, but you never know. This time of year, you just kind of gotta go with what you gotta, go with what you got rather on the farm. So in the rifle right now, we just put some uh, IMI M193 55 grain 5.56. Uh, nothing fancy, just standard uh, 193, which I'd imagine a lot of you guys out there, if you were to pick one of these up, would be running. So we shall see. I'm sure many of y'all noticed already, but I should point it out that uh, on the rifle, we have changed out the muzzle device. We put the Krebs on there because I just, I can't stand that muzzle brake that it comes with from a factory, but it's not unique to that brake. I just, I hate all brakes um, on 5.56 sounds. So uh, next up, we have some match stuff. It's Winchester. It's loaded with the 69 grain Sierra Match King Hall Point bolt tail bullet. And it's 2-3 chambering, but I've said it a million times in this channel, that bullet, whether loaded by Winchester Federal, whoever, um, is just one of the most consistently accurate across the board, uh, regardless of platform. So I say that, watch it shoot it like crap. We'll see. Uh, every rifle, every barrel is its own animal. So we'll see how this one likes it. But generally it's pretty good for a factory load, especially. Go check it out. Certainly not what I would call stellar accuracy at all. So uh, first up, of course, we had that Remington load and the two groups overlapped, which is interesting. So uh, on this one here, I was holding right on this edge right here. 
And then on this load, I was holding right here on this edge. So you can see totally different point of impact uh, with the different rounds. Um, but that one there, center to center, we are right at three and a quarter inches. Then we went over to the M193. It looks like we shot that one high, which again, very interesting that the point of impact changed. Cause again, I was aiming at the right here, just like I was here with that Remington load. Uh, but looks like we are right at three inches on the ones we have. You guys may know better than me. One of those might be two. I don't know. Um, as you guys watch the video of me shooting, I haven't watched that yet. Um, and then we had this group here, which looked real good. And then it opened up. So unfortunately that 69 grade match didn't, did work its magic this time it is what it is. And we're right at uh, about two and three quarters, a little bit less, a little bit less than two and three quarters on that group. Uh, and again, different loads guys, it might shoot it a lot better. I don't know. That's what we tested today. We don't reshoot groups it is what it is. A couple comments on the accuracy that you just saw. Number one, it's always kind of a crap shoot with the ammo that you bring out that day. Gun may like a different load, much better than the ones we tried, we don't know. That said, additional caveat to that is that for military rifles, of course, the standard uh, accuracy by both Soviet era as well as US Cold War era was for MOA. So if that is the standard, then this is within the specs. Is it going to compete with your Mark 12 as a sniper rifle? It's not. So let's start out here at the end and sort of work our way back. Out here at the end, we have this two port muzzle brake here. It is chrome lined, of course, it is loud. So we fired this one a good bit and I hate brakes, particularly on 5.56 guns. Uh, for me personally, particularly with this gun, what was actually happening when I was firing with the brake on there is that just because of muzzle control and uh, things I've developed over the years, it actually was dipping on me. So it was the opposite of what I want. You know, the brake supposedly prevents it from going up under recoil. It was actually dipping, so overcompensating. Did not like it. We switched it out to the Krebs flash hider. Much more pleasant experience from a shooter's perspective. At least that's my opinion. I know some of you guys out there love brakes. So if that's you, do you, man. Uh, but that is what it comes with. Of course, 14 millimeter threaded, and it is compatible for use with the bayonet lug that does come with it as well. We have our pinned front sight block there, and this one here is zeroed. The post is dead center. So uh, in terms of alignment with the sights, good to go. No issues on that one. Continuing on back, we do have our Bulgarian style um, gas block, which is exactly, again, what you would expect from it. Uh, the profile of the barrel is a little bit thinner than some out there. Um, depending on the country, you know, different AKs have different profile barrels, but I do like a lighter weight profile barrel. And I do also like the fact that it retains its um, capability rather to mount a stabby device, which is what makes people uh, who don't like guns very angry. And that is one of the reasons I do like it. The receiver, or excuse me, the furniture on the gun is stamped US here on the top. If I had to guess, I would imagine this lower handguard here is Bulgarian. Uh, it does have three pieces of rail on there. The ones at the six and nine o'clock position are removable. So uh, you can take them on and put, the, uh, put them off, pull them off rather, and put them on as you see fit. Uh, it's just a simple screw and nut system. And the ones here, again, on the three and six o'clock, our three and nine o'clock position rather are aluminum. And then the one on the bottom here is integral and it is polymer. So that way you can run your vertical foregrips, your bipods, whatever you want to run, you can do so. That is one of the unique features of the 94 designation of this gun. Additionally, we retain our standard sling swivel loop there. And I'm sure many of you guys out there who are complaining about Palmetto State Armory in the comments noticed, we do retain our cleaning rod as well. Continuing rearward on the rifle, you will notice another difference, and that is your typical AK gas tube lever here has been replaced with the forward portion of this 1913 rail. Now let's talk about this rail here for a little bit. Uh, it has been sold separately over on their website. Um, however, right now it's out of stock. It's been in, out of stock for a long time. I'm not sure if we're going to come into America, but you can retrofit a milled AK, uh, Arsenal AK, with one of these by replacing that gas tube lever and then putting a couple dimples here in the rear. I'm assuming it comes with some sort of guide on how to do that, the dimples that is. Um, but up front here, again, your gas tube lever is removed and replaced with this solid piece of steel. It does clamp in here to your lower receiver and the tension for the clamp is adjustable. You guys can see this little wheel right here. When it's in the open position, you can adjust that tension. And I have mine clamped on there pretty darn hard and that's intentional. If you guys watched my Sam 7 
94R, or 94 video rather, uh, which is the exact same rifle as this, just in a 7.62 by 39. I really wanted to test that return to zero capability of this system, and it was rock solid. I did the same with this particular rifle. Again, rock solid return to zero. So in terms of top mount AK rails, uh, it, it's among the best, if not the best out there on the market. There are other decent ones, um, but this one's super solid. The only kind of downside, I guess, is you probably raise up a couple of millimeters off of the um, dust cover. So for some folks, the cheek weld might not be that great, but that is how it works. And again, to undo the tension on it, mine again is tight. You just flip it open like that. And then we have our dimples milled into the rear receiver. And then on the actual uh, rail itself, each of these comes to a fine point. It's all steel, like I mentioned, and the dimples themselves are kind of uh, the exact same shape as that. So this obviously is a cone going in. This is the same, and when you actually tension it down, the turn to zero is perfect every single time. Uh, there's no exception to it that I've seen to date, and I have two different rifles with this system. Both of them have been absolutely fantastic. Um, one thing that's also different about this rifle uh, versus your standard SAM-5 is the magazine that it comes with it does have the engraving to match the engraving here on the side i should note that the engraving on this when we got it in from the factory like new was like all white and it's kind of discolored now i went and looked at several of my sam rifles that i have because i have i think anyway all of the sam rifles that have ever been brought into america and about 50 50 is some of them have discoloring some of them are still really white I have no clue why, just know that going forward. Additionally, on this top rail, it is what we would call an American T mark. It's not teed, but it does have numbers indicating where it is. They're kind of subdued on there. You guys may or may not be able to see them there on camera. It might not pick it up, but trust me, in real life, it's very easy to see. Um, and then also here on the lower, we do not have, unlike the big brother of the 7.62 version of it, we don't have a thumb safety. Um, so the SAM 7 has a thumb safety here, very similar to a Galil, it just goes in the opposite directions for safe and semi. So you do have to work your traditional AK safety, which is fit perfectly well on this particular rifle. Um, when we open it up here, um, if we take it apart, it would, also notice rather that it does have the uh, retainer here that does have the edge on it versus just going straight out like some AKs. That's indicative again of the SAM series of rifles. Makes it really tight to get off, but it is doable if you kind of wiggle the top cover like that, smack it around because it's an AK. It is what it is. Here we have our guide rod and spring and then Go ahead and take the safety off. We'll take out our bolt carrier and bolt, which of course are numbered as is the top cover, as is the receiver, so that you do know that it is a all serialized matching numbered rifle. Looking inside there, like I mentioned, you will note that there are no rivets or anything like that. Being a milled receiver, one of the advantages, or rather disadvantages of a milled receiver to most folks is going to be stock selection. You guys can see that we have two screws there on the bottom, one there on the top where our stock attaches. So there are systems out there for Bulgarian milled stocks for sure. You can replace it, uh, but they're definitely not as common as other options out there on the market. Our grip here is traditional AKM style, and it does have the U.S. marking on there indicating that it's made in the U.S. for 922R compliance. Barrel, of course, coal hammer forged, chrome lined, um, exactly what you'd expect in terms of a Bulgarian AK. And I'll throw in some pictures here of the wear marks in the receiver. Right now, this rifle has around 400 rounds, so it's not a ton because it's a collectible gun. I didn't want to really beat on it. Plus, I already have a SAM 5 video up where I put a ton of rounds through it. You guys can check that out, but it's the identical rifle with a couple differences. Um, so that definitely is one, but you can see the bolt wear there on our bolt. Uh, very, pretty much exactly what you'd expect from a uh, Bulgarian Arsenal gun. Nothing secret going on there. Our firing pin. It does have the firing pin spring safety uh, to prevent slam fires, which again, SAM series rifles have pretty normal there in that regard. And then because of the way this piece is on there, it's a little bit tricky, particularly on camera, to actually uh, put the top cover back in. But once you get the hang of it, it's not really a big deal. Like I mentioned, it goes right back into place by flipping that down just like so. We should also note here that we do have our trapdoor 
for your cleaning kits if you want to use one. It's not included with it. But what else is included? Well, you do get a sling with it, green sling, as well as an oil bottle, as well as the already mentioned uh, cleaning rod. We've covered pretty much everything relevant on the rifle that I can think of with a couple exceptions. I'm not sure if I pointed it out, but it does still retain the side mounting optic system. If you want to use that, you can. You're more than welcome to, but in my opinion, the system is superior. There's just no getting around it. Um, additionally, it does have KVAR's improved semi-flat trigger. Um, a lot of folks do dig it. Um, still an AK trigger, so uh, unlike the ALG, which is actually an upgrade in terms of practical accuracy, this isn't. It's just a little bit smoother than it would be with your typical, you know, surplus AK trigger or TAPCO trigger or something like that. So with that, I think we've covered pretty much everything we need to on the rifle with a couple exceptions being uh, reliability and cost. So reliability, zero malfunctions of any kind. Um, again, if you guys want to see a more durability geared test, definitely check out my regular SAM 5 video that we've done. But it's exactly what I expected. Arsenal SAM rifles are some of the, if not the best AKs out there on the market. I would argue that right now in 2022 America with the limited amount of AKs that we can get in, they are the best. That said, are they worth it versus other competitive offerings? That's for you guys to decide. Um, I have them all. So that's, that's my solution to it. <laughs> Um, but this one here, like I said, there's only 300 of them that will ever be brought into the United States. And with that, what are they going for price point wise? Well, I bought this one right when they were first announced and it was actually less expensive than it is now. It's gone up in price. My guess is they saw that the demand was very high for these rifles and they said, oh, let's price it, increase the price. So that way, you know, we can increase our profits, right? It's just capitalism 101. The Bulgarians aren't stupid and they are capitalists at this point. So they did raise the price right now. I just checked before coming out here. This one's going for right around $2,400. So should you buy the rifle if you're looking for an AK and 5.56? Depends, right? If you want to have a unique collector's rifle, then sure. Uh, if you want to have the exact setup that we have here, sure. Um, if you want to have a good shooter that's going to perform for home defense, hunting type role, something like that, self-defense, then probably not. I'd probably go with a regular SAM 5R and because you're going to save yourself a significant amount of money. That said, they're not cheap right now. They're around $1,800. So you're paying about $600 to have a collectible version with the feature set that we went over here. So again, who is it for? Generally speaking, I think it's for collectors. Um, if you look at any of the limited edition Arsenal rifles that have come in, they've literally all gone up in value, every single one of them since they've come in. Uh, you guys can see them selling on Gunbroker for what many of you guys would consider laughable prices. But again, they're selling on Gunbroker for those prices. Um, so the demand certainly is there. With that, if you guys have any questions or anything like that about this rifle, by all means, you can post down below in my comments section at the various social media sites that I do run. And if you guys like this type of video, uh, definitely hit the subscribe button. We do in-depth reviews like this fairly often. If you've done that and you've hit the notification bell, you can sign up for my email list at the website here on your screen. This email goes out at most once a month, and it has all of the videos since the previous month's email went out. So that way there's no big tech giant censoring your eyes for my content. Additionally, if this goes on sale, any of the mags, ammo, accessories, etc., go on sale. It will be in my daily deals email and that email goes out as the name would indicate daily and it has the best deals that we found around the internet so that way you guys can save yourself some time and some money because if it's in that email it's the cheapest I know of anywhere on the internet on that particular day. So that way again saves you guys some time don't have to do the looking. With that we'll close the video out. Thank you for watching. I truly appreciate each and every one of you and I look forward to seeing all of you in the next video.